Okay, let's uh, do a pedigree analysis problem. So here we see a pedigree for a family with Huntington's disease, and that's of course an autosomal dominant disorder. We're going to assign notation, which, you know, basically alleles, and we're going to determine the genotype of each person in this pedigree with respect to Huntington's disease. Uh, just a couple notes here. This is one, this is two, this is three. So this is individual right here. This is individual one, one. This individual is individual one, two. How about this one down here? Well, that one's individual two, five. Okay, but let's begin by looking at this problem. We're going to always start as we do with genetics problem, problems with our alleles. And we've got big H is dominant, that's Huntington's disease. And obviously the individual could be big H, big H, or they could be big H, little h, uncertain just yet. Um, little h is no disease. All right, next, parents, offspring. Put those two together, because that's what this chart here is showing us. It shows us the two, uh, basically the P1 generation, the parents up here at the top, and then all of their subsequent generation. Uh, therefore, it's got parents and offspring. And what do we know here? Let's just take a look at this. Um, up at the top here, individual 1-1 one, one and individual 1-2, these are an affected crossed with an affected. So we've got an affected crossed with an affected. Uh, let's try to spell it somewhat correctly. There we go. All right. Um, but we're not sure whether, you know, is, are they capital H, capital H, or are they little h, little h? Is there some combination of those? But we do know, and here's how we know. Look at the offspring. This one is affected. This one is affected. This one isn't. The only way that you can have this genotype and phenotype right here, we have to have little h, little h. Individual 2, 4 is little h, little h. Hmm. So therefore, it had to get these little h's from the parents. In fact, if it's got two h's, one h came, from, one little h came from one parent, and one little h came from the other parent. Therefore, by looking at the offspring in a pedigree, we can figure out the genotypes of the parents. And those are the types of questions you're going to be given on tests and assignments. There we go. We have those two top uh, individuals. We determined their genotype from looking at the uh, phenotypes of their children. So that's an important point. Uh, why don't we just double check this, though? Let's do a punnet, because that's always a good idea to check. Uh, if I cross big H, little h with big H, little h, what are my expected offspring? OK, there's one of the offspring fully affected. That one is also affected. This offspring is also affected. Ah, one and four offspring are unaffected. Similar result here, they got one and three. So, cool. And as you can see, this, this unaffected individual, all the rest are H, H, little H, little H, little H, little H. No one is affected on this side of the family. Okay, so we've, right off the bat, figured out the genotype and the phenotype, and of course the pedigree shows us the phenotype, but we've figured out the genotype for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus these parents up top, eight, nine, nine individuals. Um, and also we now know the phenotype for individuals two, dash two, and individuals two, dash three, they are the offspring. Uh, most likely phenotype anyway is going to be this one right here, but looks like that phenotype could also be big H, big H. 
How are we going to determine that is look at their offspring. We have no information on this person's offspring, individual 2, 3. So this individual could be big H, big H, or big H, little h. We can't tell. No offspring. But can we see the offspring here? Yes, we can. Little h, little h, little h. Oops, come on, Flintstone. There we go, little h, little h. Uh, again, therefore, and of course this uh, parent here, little h, little h, had to inherit a little h from that parent there. Uh, let's test that out, though. Let's go with 2, 1, that individual. For sure, that's unaffected. And we're going to cross 2, 1 with 2, 2. We're assuming that 2, 2 is big H, little h. Put it into a Punnett square. Let's see what we get. An affected offspring an unaffected offspring, an affected offspring, and an unaffected, in fact, it's 50-50. And in fact, that's what we see here, 50% affected. Pretty cool, eh? This is how powerful Punnett squares and pedigree analysis is, and this is truly used to d give genetic counseling and to help people under understand the risks of passing on genetic diseases to their children. Well, once we go through alleles, parents, offspring, we can actually answer our question. Just going to check on that question. And give me one moment. So we were going to assign some notation and uh, the determine the genotypes of each person. So I guess we'll just kind of quickly list through that. We have individual 1-1 and the genotype for sure is big H, little h. We have individual 1-2, and the genotype is for sure big H, little h. We have individual 2-2, little h, little h. Individual 2, sorry, individual 2-1 is little h, little h. Individual 2-2, uh, we know that that is big H, little h. Individual 2-3, we weren't sure. Could be big H, big H, or big H, little h. Individual 2-4, 5, and individuals 3, dash 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, and nine, all of these are all little h, little h, leaving us just these last two to assign. So individual three dash two, that's one of the offspring of these two right here. Get my pen going. So this offspring right here, we did it in the Punnett square, uh, has to be big h, little h can't be anything else from those. And individual 3-4, same thing. Big H, little h. Do check and make sure you can see how, specifically this last one here, we figured it out. Again, just to show you, we combined the Punnett square here, an unaffected parent with an affected parent and gave these results right here, so it's all good. All right, that's how to analyze a Punnett square. Try some problems on your...